Shabbat Shalom. Yeah. I appreciate y'all. Oh, she married now. Mark, can I give her a flower? She married too. Pastor Witty? <laughs> okay, okay. Well, you got to check, boy. We got some brothers in here that'll bust you down. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. She said she got to watch out. Watch out. Here we go. Now, you know I'm a straight up man. Matter of fact, I'm a grown man. And I know you're a grown man, too. All right. But I can love you. I love you, too. There you go. Yeah, going to take two. Yeah, yeah. Going to hook Pastor Robbins up. Yeah. Pastor Scott. You know I love you like the moon and the stars and the, and the Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. All right. All right. <laughs> All right, Pastor Franklin. Man, I love you. I appreciate you. Love everything that you do around here. Oh, you're the right hand man. You make things go around. Great is your faithfulness. I appreciate you. The bottom of my heart, one pastor to another, grateful to serve with you. But I'm still a grown. Oh, okay, okay. I love you. There you go. We ain't got that funny business going on. I ain't no Mr. Funny, Mr. Funny Man. Nico T with the razzle dazzle. Hey, hey, yeah. I love you, girl. Love you. Coach K. Coach K. Yeah. Love you. Appreciate you. You're old faithful. He's consistent. Every morning, four or five o'clock in the morning, he say, good morning. And I'll be wanting to tell him, good night. <laughs> but I appreciate your faithfulness. Sister Law, my sister in love, love you, lady. I appreciate you. God got some great plans for you. This year of great grace is your year of favor, your year of recompense. Yeah, you got some payback coming. Yeah, you got some things that has, held, has been held up, but it's coming. You may have been delayed, but you're not denied. Great is God's faithfulness towards you. Got one more, Lord. All right. Tim, the cake lady. The good cake lady. No, 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 no. The great cake lady. Lord, man, if y'all ain't never had a cake, y'all ain't living. God has some great things for you this year of great grace. God is going to open up the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing. There are some things that you've been desiring, some things that you've been longing for. But God says, seek me, and he will begin to give you those things. Run after God full heart wholeheartedly and you'll begin to see the windows of heaven open up right before your eyes. I'm talking about bountiful blessings. I'm talking about an overabundance and of endowment of God's grace and favor that will rest upon your life, not just for you but for those that are connected with you. God has it laid up just for you. Enter into his joy. The joy of the Lord. There you go. Oh, hold on. She said, I got some cake in the office. Man, I'm finna give you this other one. <laughs> I 
I got, I got to save her. I got to save it. I got to save it. Yeah. I felt some heat. I felt some heat. Can you hold just just a hold hold on hold on hold on? I ain't, I, God ain't through through with me yet. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Embrace the grace. Embrace the grace. Rose, it's beautiful. When we celebrate, when we have days that we want to commemorate our loved ones and those that are dear to us, some of us, what we do, we go out and we buy a rose. It's a sign that you love the person. It's just a sign that the person is special to you in your life. And for everyone that has been given a rose, you're special to me and my wife. And for those that we couldn't give roses as well, you're still special. But one of the things I've come to understand is that the rose, it is beautiful. The rose, it smells good. It looks good. It is really a symbol of grace. Graceful for how God made it and crafted it. It starts as a bud, and then it opens up and becomes beautiful. But with this, the rose also have some thorns. So although it's beautiful and although it smells good, it still got some thorns that don't feel good. But in order to hold this rose, you got to embrace it. And this is what Paul begins to write to us. He says, God, he's given me great revelation. He's given me a great life. He's allowed me to see some things that other people can't see. He's allowed me to see some things that other people can't do. But yet I still got this thorn. Everyone pick up these rolls. Pick up the rolls. And I want you to squeeze it a little bit as you look at the beauty. Squeeze it a little bit more. And it'll start feeling a little uncomfortable. Because although it's a beautiful rose, it still got some thorns. And God is trying to remind us and show us. So it is with our life. Although there's good, evil will always be present. But you can't despise the rose because of the thorns that come with it. And some of us, we got lives and we like, Lord, I need this to be better. I need this to be more. But God is saying, just look at the rose and take the focus off of the thorns. That's what God told Paul. He says, Paul, although you have those thorns in your side and you've been pleading with me, you've been praying for me to take those thorns out your side. No, I'm not going to do it, Paul. Why? Because my grace is sufficient for you. God says, look at the rose. Look at how beautiful it is. Look how beautiful your life is that I've given you. And although it's not perfect, it is still beautiful. And people will trade you your life in a lickety split just so that they can have the beauty that you have. Isaiah 61 and 3 says this, God will give us beautiful ashes. He'll give us the oil of joy for mourning. He'll give us strength for fear. So instead of focusing, get this on the thorn that's in your side. Focus on the rose in your hand and in your life. Amen? Let's get